that we have said, we have been discussing. Act 1, scene 5, the speech of Lady Macbeth. After she has read the letter, she has got a soliloquy. It means a certain speech within herself, speaking loudly with herself, telling the audience her thoughts. So, what does she say? She has been speaking about Macbeth after knowing that the weird sisters, the witches, have saluted him, have greeted him as being the Thane of Cordor, as becoming, uh, as being the Thane of Glamis, as becoming the Thane of Cordor, and then he is going to be the king. So, Lady Macbeth seems to be quite eager and enthusiastic, interested, quite happy and pleased to achieve that last prophecy, the third prophecy, because she can see from the letter, she can understand that the second prophecy has been achieved to Macbeth. So she is going to work with Macbeth in order to achieve the third prophecy which is becoming a king, and she, of course, is going to become a queen. So that's why she is saying, Glamis thou art, and Kodo, and shalt be what thou art desired, or what thou art promised to be. And then uh, she is speaking about the nature of Macbeth, saying that she knows quite well that Macbeth is having overambition, he is really a man, he is a hero, he can kill the king, but he does not have the illness that should attend that overambition. She is afraid of the too much good-heartedness in him, the compassion in him. That's why she is afraid that Macbeth is going to be reluctant, hesitant to kill the king. That's why Lady Macbeth is uh, suspended to see Macbeth in order to power in him her evil spirits, in order to motivate him to kill the king. So we are in the line uh, 20. That wouldest thou holily, wouldest not play false, etc. Thus thou must do, if thou have it, and that which rather thou dost fear to do. So then she is having the decision that, hey thee hither, we have got the line number, which number is it? It is uh, number 24, 23. Hey thee hither, it means come quite quickly that I may power my spirits in thine ear. So she is having the evil spirits in her. But he does not have those wicked spirits in him. And chastise with the valor of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round. It means that she is going to be able to motivate him to uh, take away from his mind anything that is going to prevent him from the golden round, we have got a metaphorical description of the crown. The, uh, she says, the golden round, it means the crown that he is going to get, being a king, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have the crowned withal. What does she mean by those two lines? It seems that fate and metaphysical powers. It means that Macbeth is fated to be a king by the, the speeches, the prophecies of the witches. The metaphysical powers, it means the witches, the support of the witches. To have the crowned withal, Macbeth seems to be having those abilities, the ability of being a king by fate, and by the help of the supernatural powers, which are the witches. Okay. 
So he raises a question. The question is, in the play Macbeth, you are going to have the question, what supernatural powers are there in the play Macbeth? Where are or what are the supernatural powers that you can find in the play Macbeth? The witches. First of all, the witches. Second, third, fourth. The power of Lady Macbeth. The power of Lady Macbeth, the evil spirit, the wickedness in Lady Macbeth, the spell of her words, which are just like magic. Good. Right. So try to find out. R write to me. I'm, I'm going to, uh, to write down this answer in the assignment and write to me the, uh, the answer. What are the supernatural powers that you can find in the play Macbeth? As she is speaking with herself, there is the entrance of a messenger to tell her she is telling him, what do you want, want, what is your tidings, what news do you have? <clears throat> and he tells her that the king comes here tonight and she is going to be shocked by such news, saying, thou art mad to say it. She, she is asking him that, are you mad? You must be mad. You, you must be crazy, you must be mad if you say that the king will come uh, here this night. Uh, is not thy, and then she comes to her consciousness. She is asking him, is your master coming with him? Would, it means Macbeth, would have, uh, uh, who, 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 who were, uh, who were it so, would have informed for preparation. So as she has returned to her consciousness, she does not want the messenger to suspect anything in her. So she is asking him, has your, messenger, your master, uh, has Macbeth returned with him so that we are going to prepare the, tid the tidings to her? And uh, the messenger, so please you, etc. It is true, he is going to come, but he has, uh, there is a word that uh, there is a messenger who has come, who has been quite speedy to tell us that the king is invited here this night. Lady Macbeth is telling that messenger to give him tending. It means, why? Because to take care of him, good. Because he brings great news. What does she mean by that? As that messenger, as that servant who has come before Macbeth in order to tell them that the king is their guest that night, so he should be rewarded. They should give him money or gold, etc. Because he has brought great news. What's your commentary on this? Yes. Uh, Lady Macbeth has uh, the opportunity to uh, prepare for uh, uh, preparing the uh, plan. Yes. The, the king. Down. Yes. So uh, she uh, she should uh, provide uh, this messenger uh, for his news, for his golden news. Yes. Yes. So, uh, right. Yeah. Right. So. Lady Macbeth means that he breaks go, uh, great news, it means golden news, news that are going to change their future. Why? Because? Yes, Yusuf? She knows that uh, they are going to be uh, kings and queens. Yes. So she, from the very beginning when she heard about the news that the king is coming, she thought that this is the golden opportunity that I'm going to take in order to be a queen. So she was astonished that because it would, uh, has been so fast. Yes. Uh, at, at the moment that she was reading that the king, they are going to be a king. Yes. The messenger arrived and brought yes. the news. Yes. And this is the, the news is uh, 
appeared as an opportunity, an opportunity right. for the way that would lead them to be kings and queens. So she was astonished and quite uh, uh, unbelievably yes. uh, astonished. Uh, be because of her great ecstasy. She is ecstasy, it means she is at the peak of her happiness. Because she cannot believe that the prophecy of the witches, the third one, going is going to be achieved in brief. such uh, a very brief time. That's right, good. What's your name? Hamas Salam. Hamas Salam. Yes. Miss, you said she was what? Sa'ad. Hamas Sa'ad. Sa 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 she, she is at the peak. Uh, she is at the peak now. Lady Macbeth seems to be at the peak of her ecstasy. Ecstasy. It means happiness. ecstasy. Happiness. Happiness. Great happiness. E C T A S Y. Ecstasy. It means she is at the peak of her happiness. She cannot believe that the prophecy of the witches is going to be achieved in such uh, a brief time, in such a fast way. Okay. So it means that uh, there are two meanings in he brings great news. Mm -hmm. Now the messenger is going to get the meaning, the surface meaning. The surface meaning, uh, which, which means that because the king is invited to them, perhaps for the first time. So uh, uh, this is, uh, these are great news. But we, the audience, we are going to get the, the meaning that the news are really great to Lady Macbeth because such a news, the coming of the king, is going to change their future. And then she says the raven himself is, is horse, etc. From this speech, we are going to exclude this speech. It is not going to be required to you in the exam. Uh, by the way, in the exam, you are going to get certain speeches which you are going to analyze. This speech will be excluded. It is not going to, to be to you. The, this speech, the speech that is in page 35 from the line 35 till, till the entrance of Macbeth. It means till line 54. This is excluded. But we are going to get the meaning of it, the summary of it. What does Lady Macbeth say here? <clears throat> In order to make the matter easier to you, alaykum <laughs> salam wa rahmatullah. I do not want to include uh, a great number of lines of speeches. We are going to include only the most important speeches. Even this speech, it is important because here in this speech, Lady Macbeth is going to ask Knight to come and uh, to scatter the whole area, just as Macbeth has asked the Knight to come by saying, stars hide your fires. Let not light see my deep and black desires. The eye wink at the hand, yet let it be the intention of Macbeth to kill, to kill the king. Now, we have got the intention of Lady Macbeth to kill the king. So she is asking the stars, she is asking the night to come, the thick night, it means, she is asking darkness to prevail, to separate the area, so that no one, that my keen knife, okay, we are going to include this speech, it is quite important. This speech that is going to begin from here, Annie. The last four lines, four lines and a half. It means the line number 47. From the line number 47, this is going to be included. Why? Lady Macbeth says that uh, it seems that the King Duncan is fated to be killed in our house. And then 
She is asking the supernatural powers to unsex here, to unsex her, it means to take from her the compassion, the kindness, the emotions of the sympathy of the woman and to put instead gall, venom, wickedness, so that she will be quite uh, brave to be able to motivate Macbeth to kill the king. And then she is asking the knight, come thick knight, and pull thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wind it makes. Can you see? Her speech is an echo to the speech of Macbeth when he says that mine eye should not see what my hand is going to do. Yeah. So both of them are having the intentions of killing the king by themselves. Lady Macbeth wants to kill the king by her own self. And Macbeth, of course, in, intends to kill the king by his own hand. So she is asking the uh, darkness to come. It is said in the Elizabethan times, age, it is believed that the darkness is going to be the cover of every crime, of witchcraft, of every uh, uh, sin and crime. That's right. Uh, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. Tfadla. What does she mean? L look at, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark. Even heaven, even, even uh, heaven, uh, God, uh, the, the sky will not pay attention, will not be able, uh, will not peep through, just like the winking of the eye. When he says that the eye is going to close for a moment and then it is going to be open. So even heaven, it cannot peep, it, it cannot look at what Lady Macbeth is going to do. It is a figurative speech. Uh, again, again, Lady Macbeth is uh, good. Again, Lady Macbeth is having another soliloquy in the play. Because you can see that the messenger, the messenger has gone away. He has left. And she is alone again, uh, speaking with herself, saying that she should be quite determined to, uh, uh, to encourage Macbeth to kill the king. So pay attention that in the play, we have got, uh, in those scenes, in this scene, we have got two soliloquies of Lady Macbeth. Why? It means that even Lady Macbeth, she is as great as Macbeth. So she is having a deep inner conflict within herself, but she cannot pay attention to it. She does not want. She, she pretends that there is no conflict within her. She does not want to pay attention to that conflict. That's why we have got that other soliloquy. Just like Macbeth, who has got uh, uh, five asides within two scenes, scene three and four. So we have got no heaven peep through the blanket of the dark. Look at the highly figurative language that Shakespeare is using. Look at the style of Shakespeare's uh, of Shakespeare, uh, how he is using such a grand style, an elevated style. So you can see that nor heaven peep through. Peep here, there is personification. There is personification, giving, giving heaven a personal quality uh, through the blanket of the dark, it means through darkness. The blanket of the dark, it means we have got metaphor, yes. metaphor, metaphorical language. There is a comparison between darkness that is going to prevail when there will be night and a certain blanket. 
So it means that uh, it means that darkness is compared to a blanket. It means that tfadla. It means that even sleep is going to be compared to darkness and to a blanket. When somebody is going to get asleep during the Elizabethan time in this play, we can see that it is going to be compared to, uh, to dead people. Uh, they, uh, as if they are covered with a certain blanket and no one can see them. To cry, hold, hold, it means no one is going, no element is going to come from heaven to tell her that she should hold her, uh, her sword or her, uh, or her dagger. Yani she should stop killing the king. Okay, it means that Lady Macbeth is determined to kill the king and she will impede, prevent anybody, any element uh, which is going to prevent her from doing so. As she is speaking, there is the entrance of Macbeth. So, on seeing Macbeth, she is greeting him with great glamour, worthy Cordor, the greatest, greater than both, by the all hail hereafter. She is greeting him. She is putting high spirits in him. She is planting high spirits in him. She is encouraging him, right? Thy letters, she says. So it means that it is not one letter. We have read one letter, right? We have seen one letter in scene five. But it seems that there are many letters. So thy letters have transported me that I can feel the present, the future in the present. It means they have transported me beyond the ignorant present, beyond this ignorant present. Thank you. And I feel now the future in the instant. What does this mean? It, it may be a future, but the future is already here. Yes. <coughs> she, can, she can read the future from now by the letters of Macbeth. As soon as Macbeth has written the letters to Lady Macbeth, she can read what will happen to them in the future. She can predict that they are going to be the king and the queen. So, such a news in the letter, they, uh, they have transported her, they have lifted her beyond the ground, up from the ground, up and up and up, that she can read the future in this uh, real present. It means that she can feel now that she is a queen. She is not Lady Macbeth only. This is what she is saying to Macbeth. She is really elevated. Irtaqat ila an takun queen. So? Lady Macbeth is quite happy with the news that Macbeth has sent to her through the letters. So there is no need to Macbeth to, to speak anymore because she has known the future and she is going to practice her powers until she will achieve that future, the golden one, as she thinks. But can you see Macbeth? Is he as happy as her? As Lady Macbeth? No. Of course not. Why? Because, because he is having Muhammad Abdul Ghani. He has some hesitation. He begins to feel sympathized to the king. Yes. Since he was generous to him. Yes, that's right. He has so much human milk. Yes. He is full of, he is having so much of the human milk, so much good-heartedness. He, he seems to be having goodness, more goodness than Lady Macbeth. Yeah, That's right. The William Shakespeare, actually, in the beginning of this play, 
uh, he puts the evilness of let's say the evil in the uh, the, the person of uh, Lady Margaret. Yes. Or otherwise, in, in other play, in, uh, in other place of display, uh, it will be the opposite thing. Um, so he will take, uh, let's say, Margaret will protect this evil yes. inside him yes. and uh, absorb that, uh, let's say, yes. uh, the evilness. And, right. And become the most. Uh, Good, good. That's right. You mean that it seems that Shakespeare, the playwright, has put the evil seed inside Lady Macbeth more than in Macbeth. But later on, when Lady Macbeth is going to deteriorate in character, when she is going to weaken down, to break down in character, the evil seed is going to be stronger in Macbeth. Do you mean that? Yeah, it's a moral lesson. Yes. Of course, after the, uh, at the end of the play, we are going to get the moral lesson. Right. That's right. So, Macbeth seems to be uh, sad, confused, perplexed, perplexed, he is having a great perplexity. He is having uh, torture within himself. There is a certain crisis in him that is really uh, torturing him. So we have got these words, perplexity, perplexity, he, he is having, he is having a great dilemma. He is suffering. He is suffering from the plight of will he become a king, will he kill the king or not. There is a certain torture in him. There is a certain crisis in him. That's why he is tortured. That's why he is confused. That's why he is in a great perplexity. He does not know what to do. So he is telling Lady Macbeth that, my dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. So it is a problem to him that, seems to be afraid. yes, he seems to be quite afraid of the coming of the king. Yes, yes, so that's why at the same time, he's astonished because he knew that he's going to be a king. And yes. the king arrived, will be arrived here. Yes. So he is shocked from the coming of the king. He is afraid of the idea of killing the king. He was planning to kill the king and the yes. king is to come. Yes. He has got the intention. You can see, you have seen before Lady Macbeth has known about the prophecies of the witches, Macbeth has got the intention of killing the king. But it seems that he is more reasonable than Lady Macbeth. He has thought about the matter. That's why he is afraid of his coming. Your name? Zaina Faisal. Right. But Lady Macbeth is telling him, and when does he go? When he is going to, to go again? He tells her that tomorrow, as he purposes, as he decides, Lady Macbeth is deciding that, or never that morrow shall see, or never shall sun that morrow see. It means that. Ma that the king is not going to see the next day, the morning of the next day. Why? Because, of course, she is having a determination that they will kill her. Right. Safa? Oh, your sister? Marwa? Yes. Safa Talal. Safa Talal. I can't distinguish between you. Uh, I am, yes, sir. Yes. Yes, what is it? Uh, in, uh, in Macbeth's uh, message to his uh, wife. Yes, in Macbeth's letter to his yeah. wife. Did uh, he um, refer to killing the king 
No. No. He has not referred to kill the king. But he has only reported to her that they have met me at the day of success, and I have thought that you are going to rejoice, to be quite happy at hearing such a news. Lay such a news to your heart and farewell. Uh, and they, uh, he has also told her that one of the prophecies has been achieved. The second prophecy has been achieved. So in the letter, it seems that from writing the letter to her, he has got, when he has written the letter to her, he has got the intention of killing the king, although he does not say it frankly. Mr. Yes? I think uh, Shakespeare was quite intelligent in such, yes. a, such a letter because the Lady Macbeth, uh, uh, she is home, and uh, Macbeth is in the battlefield. So yes. how he can inform Lady Macbeth of the news, he, he, if he... Uh, they didn't send the letter, he's yes. going to repeat himself and yes. we will have redundant. Yes, redundancy of course. In his reply. Of course, so right. To do that for dramatic for necessity. Efficiency for, yes. efficiency for dramatic purposes, yes. he has sent this letter yes. to uh, Lady Macbeth in order to inform the news. Yes. The news if the uh, that happened in the uh, battlefield, yes. and it, would, it would be a chance. To, to Shakespeare to be efficient and yes. to the news that uh, has the news uh, the, yes Macbeth. yes that's right the news that have happened before they are told by Macbeth to Lady Macbeth for economy of time yes that's right in order to avoid redundancy in the play so it means for dramatic purposes right and there is another reason which is that Lady Macbeth yes. 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 It seems that she is a good partner yeah. to him. It, it seems that she is really as ambitious as him. Yes. Yes. Good. Inshallah, the fourth will be discussed in the study of Shakespeare. Right. Yes. Macbeth has the intention of killing the king from the very beginning. Yes. Yes. And all of this execution, how can we consider? That Macbeth has a good heart. Naam. How can we consider that Macbeth? Macbeth has a, a, good, a good heart. A good heart. Uh, of course, it is a true. This is something true, uh, true that the characteristics of the tragic hero are that he is good by nature. He is, having, he is having a good heart, but with a certain flaw in his character. The moral flaw in him, the Hamashia, the moral defect and weakness in him is his overambition. He should be good by nature with a certain hamashia so that you will uh, respect him and give him the dignity of having the tragic stature. Yes? Macbeth is not only confused because he is good. Yes. Yes. He is also he is not only confused because he is brave and he can kill the king, but he is also confused because the king Duncan is a great, fair king. He is an old man who is quite good and he is quite, quite fair and loved by his people. And yes? He has a good, uh, great heart. Yes, that's right. He is compassionate to his people. Right. What's your name? Naam? Aliya. And what's your name? Ahmed Fethi. Ahmed Fethi. Right. Good. I'd like to reply to my classmate, uh, Ahmed. If, yes. If uh, Macbeth wasn't a good-hearted man, how he will start <coughs> to fail me for provide my deeds, provide my things, thoughts 
from the, from being revealed to everyone. How he will uh, he will say, I will close my eyes while I am uh, going to kill the king. Yes. How he is go how he is afraid of killing the king because he is a good man, or how he is thinking over the mass again and again in order to. Uh, have an excuse, uh, execution in order to not kill the king. To have, have an excuse. Yeah, yes. excuse, sorry. Yes. Uh, to not killing the king. And he says that the king was generous, he was good, yes. and he was pro he promoted me. Yes. I'm not going to kill him. So yes. he has uh, the goodness and the kindness, he yes. has good heart, uh, yes. heartness, so but it's, yes. still he has uh, an over ambition, he is ambitious to be a king, yes. and uh, uh, his wife. Yes. His wife so his has ambition. So the flaw. You mean that the flaw in his character is pushing him. The the weakness in his character. His own hamashia is pushing him to commit a crime. Right. In to kill to the king. The, the, the in addition to the motivation of his wife. In addition to the motivation of the witches. That's right. So you mean that Macbeth is really good by nature, but because of the Hamashia in uh, his character, just like all other tragic heroes in Shakespeare's plays, so he is pushed to commit a sin and kill the king, and then he is going to repent his deed. He will realize his deed. He will realize his mistake. He will say that after killing the king, he is going to kill Banco. He is going to kill Macduff's family. It means that he is going to kill a great number of people. It means that he will feel himself wading in the river of blood. So he is going to have a certain uh, speech within himself, a certain self-realization that he has gone too far in the river of blood. To go forward is as tedious as going backward. So what will he do? It is too late for him to repent. He should go forward. If he will return backward and surrender, they are going to say that uh, Macbeth the king has surrendered and he has died uh, a death uh, of weak people, of cowards. So he has to go on, and he has to die with his weapons on his arms, so that, uh, because he is a great warrior, he cannot do something other than that. He cannot surrender like cowards. So that's why he goes on in his crimes. And you are going to see that quite clear when he is going to be face to face <coughs> with Macduff. Macduff is going to tell him that it is enough. Uh, 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 Macbeth uh, is uh, Macduff at the end of the play. He is going to ask to shout at Macbeth. Come, Macbeth, I want to uh, combat with you, to kill you. And Macbeth will tell him that I have got enough, too much of the blood of you. He means his family. So he does not want to quarrel with him. But uh, uh, Macbeth tells him that no man born of a woman is going to kill me. Yeah. But, uh, but Martin... While Macduff is going to clarify the matter, the prophecy of the witches, by saying that... Uh, by saying that uh, he is not... Uh, he, he had not uh, born as... Uh, yes, he has not been born a normal birth. Yeah. He has been born by a Caesarian operation. Yes. So uh, by that, Macbeth has realized the equivocations of the witches' prophecies. What do you mean by equivocations? Can you see that at the end of the play, Macbeth is going to... Prophecies. It means the riddles, 
the double meanings yeah. the witches are having double meanings in their prophecies when they speak with Macbeth, when they speak with Banker. <coughs> Can you remember any what what are your names? Both of you. Can you remember what the witches have told Banku? What are the prophecies that are said to Banku? Let us hear from your colleagues. Yes. Can you remember what the witches have told Banku? Yes. That, that he is going to be less than Macbeth, but greater, right? Not so happy, yet much happier. So, can you solve that those riddles of the witches' prophecies? How will Banku be much more happy, much happier than Macbeth? How will he be less great than Macbeth, yet greater? Yes? He doesn't. Because he is not going to, because he has not committed a crime. Because although he is going to be killed and dead, he will be resting in his grave. And Macbeth is going to have an envy to him. He is going to be jealous of her. He will say that better we be with the dead whom we have sent to grace uh, rather than be living here but greatly tortured. Right. Good. So these are the qualifications of the witches. It means that there are double meanings. Yeah. Yes. 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 To behave in front of the yes. people. Yes, yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. In this speech. Just like a, yeah. Yes. Lady Macbeth is going to tell Macbeth now a certain speech in which there will be a simile, a comparison between look like the innocent to beguile the time. Lady Macbeth is going to tell her husband. Yes, uh, Mutanna, excuse me. I'm going to read the speech of Lady Macbeth. Lady Macbeth now, uh, as she is asking Macbeth, when will the king return? And he tells her tomorrow, and she is determined that the king will not see the sun of the next day. Then she can pay attention, she can recognize, realize that Macbeth's face is quite pale that Macbeth is quite confused. He is quite uh, shocked by the coming of the king and he is quite uh, worried uh, because of the coming of the king. He does not know what to do. That's why she is telling him, your face, my lord, my thane, is as a book where, ma where men may read strange matters. Here, what does she mean? It means to behave in front of the people. Uh, to beguile like the time, look yeah. like the time. Yeah. Yes. Like, uh, uh, be the innocent, flower. you should look like the so, innocent flower, but be the serpent and dirt. Yes. When, so when uh, the person who will look at him, he will immediately will feel uh, that uh, his heart full of uh, goodness and calm. <coughs> A person who is going to look at the face of Macbeth, he is going to see great worries in him. Yes. He is going, a person is going to see that he is hiding evil, wicked intentions in him or certain fears in him. Why? It means that 
he has got evil intentions against somebody, against the king. Right. So this is what Lady Macbeth says. Who else? Yes. What's your name, Annie? Yes. Sajjad to ask him, Zaina Faisal. Yes. 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 Hypocrisy. Yes. Yes. Look at the, this speech when Lady Macbeth is going to tell Macbeth that to beguile the time, your face, my thane, is as a book where everything is going to be read in it by people. To beguile the time, look like the time. Here, Lady Macbeth seems to be a very professional teacher. Yeah. She is teaching Macbeth how to be hypocrite, how to show hypocrisy to, be, to people, right? Like yes, uh, Zaina Faisal. Yeah. Like a snake beneath the flower. Look like the innocent flower, but be the, the serpent under it. He should behave in front of people just like a person who is full of goodness and friendliness to them, uh, love to them. He should pretend to, uh, in front of people that he loves them, uh, though he is going to hide the inner wicked, evil intentions, hatred inside him. That's right. Yes? Okay, so <clears throat> in this speech, we have got the theme of hypocrisy. The theme of hypocrisy. <clears throat> the theme of seeming and being, and the theme of hypocrisy. Lady Macbeth is teaching Macbeth how to behave in front of people. He should not remain that good-hearted man who, whose uh, heart is open on his face, is shown, revealed in his face. He should hide what is there inside his heart, the hatred, the, uh, the ill uh, deeds that he is going to commit, the ill intentions, the wicked intentions that he has. But he should show a loving face to people. So the idea of seeming and being appearance and reality, the idea of hypocrisy. Macbeth should show hypocrisy to people so that no one will suspect him. We'll say that Macbeth is an evil person, a wicked person. He has killed the king. After killing the king, no one can say that Macbeth has killed the king. Why? Because he is going to show how uh, how grieving he is, how sad he is uh, for the death, the murder of the king. Well, so Macbeth tells her that they will speak further in this business because he has got his own idea that is different from the idea of Lady Macbeth. Well, we are going to, we are obliged to stop here because of time. Who are the participators in this lecture today? I have Muhammad Saad, Yusuf, Muhammad Abdul Ghani, Zainab Faisal, Safa Talal, Ayam Yasser, Aliya, Ahmed Fathi, Muthanna. Yes? La, this one. Omar? Omar Zirar? Ba'ad. Ba'ad, Menu, Ahmed Fathi, Sajjatu Ismu. Honi, the Banat. Who has participated? Okay. The participations are going to be repeated many times, and you are going to get good marks, inshallah, from now till the, the end of the year. So for next time, we are going to continue until the end of Act 1. We are going to continue uh, uh, scene uh, 6 and 7. Yeah, I
Till that time, farewell. <laughs> Do you have any questions? The speech that we have said, we have been discussing, Act 1, Scene 5, the speech of Lady Macbeth, after she has read the letter, she has got a soliloquy, it means a certain speech within herself, speaking loudly with herself, telling the audience her thoughts. So, what does she say? She has been speaking about Macbeth after knowing that the weird sisters, the witches, have saluted him, have greeted him as being the Thane of Cordor, as becoming, uh, as being the Thane of Glamis, as becoming the Thane of Cordor, and then he is going to be the king. So Lady Macbeth seems to be quite eager and enthusiastic, interested, quite happy and pleased to achieve that last prophecy, the third prophecy, because she can see from the letter, she can understand that the second prophecy has been achieved to Macbeth. So she is going to work with Macbeth in order to achieve the third prophecy, which is becoming a king, and she, of course, is going to become a queen. So that's why she is saying, Glamis thou art and Kodo and shalt be what thou art desired or what thou art promised to be. And then uh, she is speaking about the nature of Macbeth, saying that she knows quite well that Macbeth is having overambition. He is really a man. He is a hero. He can kill the king, but he does not have the illness that should attend that overambition. She is afraid of the too much good-heartedness in him, the compassion in him. That's why she is afraid that Macbeth is going to be reluctant, hesitant to kill the king. That's why Lady Macbeth is uh, suspended to see Macbeth in order to power in him her evil spirits, in order to motivate him to kill the king. So we are in the line uh, 20. That wouldest thou holily, wouldest not play false, etc. Thus thou must do, if thou have it, and that which rather thou dost fear to do. So then she is having the decision that, hey thee hither. We have got the line number. Which number is it? It is uh, number 24, 23. Hey thee hither, it means, come quite quickly, that I may power my spirits in thine ear. So she is having the evil spirits in her, but he does not have those wicked spirits in him. And chastise with the valor of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round. It means that she is going to be able to motivate him to uh, take away from his mind anything that is going to prevent him from the golden round. We have got a metaphorical description of the...